सो स्टूडेंट्स इन एपिसोड सिक्स वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द इंडिपेंडेंट असोटमेंट एज वेल एज द फिनो टाइप हाउ वी कैन फाइंड आउट विद द फोर क्लाइन मैथड नाउ इन दिस एपिसोड वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द फोर क्लाइन मैथड फॉर द जीनो टाइप लेट्स कम जीनो टाइप मीन्स होमोजाइगस डोमिनेंट हेट्रोजाइगस एंड होमोजाइगस रेसेसिव इफ यू रिमेंबर कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी वॉज द होमोजाइगस डोमिनेंट प्रोबिलिटी वॉज द वन आउट ऑफ फोर हेट्रोजाइगस कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी प्रोबिलिटी वॉज द टू आउट ऑफ फोर एंड द होमोजाइगस रेसेसिव स्मॉल टी स्मॉल टी प्रोबिलिटी वॉज द वन बाई फोर इट वॉज द मोनो हाइब्रिड जीनोटिपिक रेशियो नाउ लेट्स यूज दिस फॉर द डाई हाइब्रिड मीन्स सेकेंड सेट ऑफ द जीनो टाइप यू रिमेंबर कैपिटल आर कैपिटल आर होमोजाइगस डोमिनेंट हेट्रोजाइगस एंड होमोजाइगस रेसेसिव सिमिलरली कैपिटल आर कैपिटल आर कैपिटल आर स्मॉल आर एंड स्मॉल आर स्मॉल आर होमोजाइगस डोमिनेंट हेट्रोजाइगस एंड होमोजाइगस रेसेसिव एंड लाइक वाइज प्रोबेबिलिटी अगेन वन बाई फोर टू बाई फोर एंड वन बाई फोर एंड सेम इन दीज टू केसेज ऑल्सो सो डायरेक्टली नाउ जीनो टाइप मीन्स फर्स्ट जीनो टाइप बिकम कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी कैपिटल आर कैपिटल आर प्रोबिलिटी वन बाई फोर इंटू वन बाई फोर इज इक्वल टू वन आउट ऑफ द सिक्सटीन Likewise, for the second one, capital T, capital T, capital R, small R, means one by four into two by four is equals to two by sixteen. In the same way, now the third genotype comes, capital T, capital T, small R, small R, one by four into one by four, again one out of the sixteen. Come for the capital t small t then the first genotype become capital t small t capital r capital r probability 2 by 4 into 1 by 4 means 2 by 16 second genotype comes capital t small t capital r small r means 2 by 4 both are heterozygous so 2 by 4 into 2 by 4 is equals to 4 out of 16 and same way. capital t small t small r small r means 2 by 4 into 1 by 4 means again 2 out of 16 for the third small t small t capital r capital r small t small t capital r capital r means again 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 means 1 out of the 16 then small t small t capital r small r means 1 by 4 into 2 by 4 means 2 out of the 16 and the last small t small t small r small r means 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 because both are homozygous and that is 1 out of the 16 so what is the phenotype comes genotype comes 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 in simple mathematical approach also you can find out i already told you that di hybrid is nothing it is a multiplication of the two mono hybrid cross and in mono hybrid what was the genotypic ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1 for the secondary mono hybrid character also it is 1 is to 2 is to 1 it means for a di hybrid cross we can say likewise 1 is to 2 is to 1 into 1 is to 2 is to 1 and the resultant of it would be what 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 that's it means mathematically also we can find out it without doing any kind of a cross so in this way with help of this four klein method for the phenotype as well as for the genotype you can easily do the calculations and we all are aware that in genetics there is a so abundance of the such kind of a questions so few questions i would like to discuss with you in a dihybrid cross 
in F2 progeny what would be the probability of or what would be the proportion of first question homozygous for both gene pairs second question homozygous for both gene pairs third question homozygous for one and heterozygous for other character or other gene pair parental phenotype parental genotype parental is to new phenotype parental is to new genotype on the basis of the di hybrid cross these few questions you have to give the answer so let's take first question homozygous for both of the gene pairs if you will observe punnett square or the checkerboard of the di hybrid cross then you will found that homozygous for both of the gene pair are the 4 out of the 16 for your convenience i can also mark that what were these four you remember capital t capital t capital r capital r homozygous for both small t small t small r small r was also homozygous for both capital t capital t small r small r is also homozygous for both and small t small t capital r capital r is also homozygous for both so out of the 16 in the f2 progeny there are four members which are homozygous for the both gene pairs so answer of the first question is 4 out of the 16 homozygous for both of the gene pair and second question is a heterozygous for both of the gene pairs so mistake heterozygous for both of the gene pairs you know heterozygous for both of the gene pair means what capital t small t capital r small r by probability law already i taught you probability of the heterozygous 2 by 4 second one is also heterozygous so 2 by 4 it means 2 by 4 into 2 by 4 means 4 out of the 16 are those members which are heterozygous for both of the genes so answer for the second question is also 4 out of the 16 now homozygous for the one and heterozygous for the other gene pair then the answer is 8 out of the 16 because there out of the 16 member four members are homozygous for both four members are heterozygous for both it means eight members that remain left are homozygous for the one and heterozygous for the another one it means simply the answer is a eight out of the 16 next parental phenotype parent what was the parental combination that i took in the beginning of the dihybrid cross tall plant with the round seed and dwarf plant with the wrinkle seed 
and four types of a phenotype we obtain tall round tall wrinkled dwarf round dwarf wrinkled it means tall round nine is it parental yes tall wrinkled three but it is the recombinant not the parental so excluded then dwarf round it is also new combination not the parental so exclude it and the dwarf wrinkled yes it was the parental so out of the 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 these 9 tall with the round seed and the one dwarf with the wrinkled seed is the parental so parental phenotype showing plants are 10 out of the 16 similarly parental genotype what does the parental genotype capital T capital T capital R capital R this is only one out of the 16 and second was small t, small t, small r, small r. It was also parental type. It means it is also one out of the 16. So parental genotype showing members are only two out of the 16. Now parental is to new phenotype. Very simple. I already said 10 members are parental. It means six remain left are new combination. So parental is to new phenotype is 10 is to 6. Similarly, parental is to new genotype. Parental genotype showing only 2 means 2 and 14 is the answer. Means with help of this dihybrid course, with help of this mathematical approach of the product law, probability law, we can easily calculate such kind of a questions and I hope you are also now in a comfortable zone. So Mendel has proposed 4 postulate, postulate 1 and 2 collectively called law of dominance. Postulate 3 that is called law of segregation and recently we discussed the postulate 4 that is called law of independent assortment. So independent assortment and segregation are the two important aspects that we discussed into the last two classes. Now we will discuss some more facts and uh, about the genetics. One is the test cross. In monohybrid course as well as in dihybrid course, when we obtain F1 generation, you all are aware that the F1 plants are dominant plants, tall plant crossed with the dwarf F1 are tall, round plant crossed with the wrinkled F1 are round. Now here question is that, that this tall plant means a dominant phenotype showing plant can be of homozygous nature or can be of heterozygous nature because after uh, after visualizing any plant externally you cannot judge that it is a homozygous tall or it is a heterozygous tall means what is exact their genotype to know this that the dominant phenotype showing plant is a homozygous or heterozygous to know about it to find out it, there is a provision of a cross, that cross is known as a test cross. As the name is indicating that this cross helps to test, what test? It helps to test that the dominant phenotype showing plant is a homozygous or it is a heterozygous. So what is the provision in the test cross? That our tall plant, tall phenotype may be either homozygous tall or maybe heterozygous tall if this plant is allowed to cross with dwarf plant dwarf plant means small t small t then what is the result of this cross it would be the determinant of the phenotype there are two possibilities in this case if suppose capital our tall plant is a homozygous tall and cross with the dwarf small t small t and if our tall plant is a heterozygous tall cross with the dwarf plant means small t small t in this case you all are aware that all plant of this cross would be tall in this case, you all are aware that uh, this plant will produce two types of gametes, capital T gametes and small t gametes and this plant will produce only one type of a gamete that is the small t gametes and afterwards we will obtain capital T small t and small t small t. It means uh, tall is to dwarf in 1 is to 1 ratio. 
means the dominant phenotype showing plant whether it is a tall or it is a dwarf to uh, whether it is a homozygous tall or it is a heterozygous tall to know it to find out it we will allow to cross it with the recessive parent means the dwarf plant if after this cross all plant comes dominant it means the plant the dominant phenotype showing plant is the homozygous if it gives rise to the tall as well as dwarf both in one is to one ratio it represent that the tall was the heterozygous tall so on the basis of this we can easily find out if same kind of a progeny arise after the cross of this dominant phenotype showing plant with the recessive plant same kind of a progeny arise it means it is a homozygous dominant if in one is to one ratio both kind of a progeny dominant phenotype progeny and recessive phenotype progeny if arise that means that the the dominant plant is actually the heterozygous dominant in this way for the dihybrid cross also we can find out so monohybrid test cross ratio comes what monohybrid test cross ratio comes 1 is to 1 now dihybrid test cross means capital plant with round seeds crossed with dwarf plant with wrinkled seeds if this tall and round plant is a homozygous dominant then you all are aware that after this cross the entire progeny would be tall with the round seed means no ratio but if it is a heterozygous capital t small t capital r small r cross with the small t small t small r small r then it will produce four types of gametes capital t capital r gamete capital t small r gamete small t capital r gamete and small t small r gamete and you know the homozygous recessive will produce only one type of gamete that is small t small r consequently we will obtain capital t small t capital r small r means the tall with the round seed we will obtain capital t small t small r small r it means tall with wrinkled seed we will obtain small t small t capital r small r means dwarf with the round seed and we will obtain small t small t small r small r means dwarf with the wrinkled seed means tall round tall wrinkled dwarf round dwarf wrinkled in the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 means mono hybrid test cross ratio 1 is to 1 dihybrid test cross ratio 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 it means in dihybrid test cross we are obtaining tall with round and dwarf with wrinkled means two parental combinations p for parental combination and two tall with the wrinkled and dwarf with the round these two combinations are the recombinant combinations means in a dihybrid test cross we will obtain 50% parental combination and 50% new combinations so with help of the test cross we can find out genotype of the dominant phenotype showing plants so mono hybrid and dihybrid cross their related laws we have discussed in brief we can also discuss about the reason because i already told you that mendel was not the pioneer scientist who did experiments on the pisum plant regarding to the mechanism of inheritance before this knight goss de graaf were also the scientist that already conducted experiment on the pea plant but they never reached up to the any kind of a conclusion so here there what was the reasons that mendel get succeed or mendel was the successful behind uh, 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 in their experimental approach so there are some fundamental reasons number 1 selection of the pea plant for the study of the principles of inheritance or mechanism of inheritance was the foremost reason of the success number 1 number 2 you must remember what he was observing 
he was calculating the height of the toll plant or the height of the dwarf plant no he was calculating number of the toll plant and number of the dwarf plant it means in technical terms i can say that he was doing quantitative measurement of the qualitative character the character tall and dwarf is a qualitative character and he was not measuring to the length he was measuring to the number of tall and number of dwarf this is called qualitative that is called quantitative measurement of the qualitative character that was the unique approach used by the mendel reason you know that he is regarded as a founder or father of genetics because it was the approach third thing you must remember first use of the pisum plant number 2 quantitative analysis of the qualitative character number 3 at a time either one character or two character he take under the consideration for the uh, experimental work use or consideration of either one or two character at a time was also one of the leading reason behind the success of mendel fourth thing that you all are aware that he was expertise of the mathematics and statistics that is why before doing an experiment first with help of the statics and probability laws he calculate that in what proportion the progeny should be arise and then afterwards the mathematical interpretation when comes in his mind afterwards he did the experiment on the plant and when the results were similar to the mathematical calculation that he did in his mind coincide with each other he simply conclude that whatever i thought was exactly practically implemented and it is not a matter of a chance it is not just an imagination of myself it is a principle it is a mechanism of the inheritance so these were some of the reasons because of which one more thing we can discuss that he keep record of the all data for a long time and conduct all these experiments in a very passionate manner on each and every character that is why he reached up to such a zenith and one more thing i would like to share with you that he always used to the pure pure line parents pure line parent was also one of the reason of his success because if parents are pure line it means the characters are stable in the parent then only the right pattern of the inheritance of this character can be find out so these were some of the reasons selection of the pure p plant was one of the reason quantitative analysis of the qualitative character consideration of either one or two character at a time keeping record of all the experiments selection of the pure line parent and use of the mathematical approach were the reasons behind the success of mendel so it was the mendelian genetics that we studied till now now it doesn't mean it is that the mendel's work is only the way or is only the mechanism through which the all genes are inheriting in the different diverse kind of a organism you know this is only one type of a pattern of the inheritance in technical terms what we call it monogenic qualitative inheritance mendelian genetics is a kind of monogenic qualitative inheritance it means here each character governed by a gene pair one allelic gene pair regulate to a character so this is called monogenic and here character is of a qualitative nature means here their quality is a matter tall and dwarf is not a quantity it is a quality round and wrinkled is a quality uh, axillary position and terminal position is a quality it means he was doing measurement of the qualitative characters so this type of inheritance called monogenic qualitative inheritance but some other modes of the inheritance also observed into the genetics you can also say that some deviations of the mendelian pattern of the inheritance also we can observe in the genetics these things we will study in the coming time so let's discuss that we can say deviations of the mendelism or you can also use the another word gene interactions gene interactions are those genetical event where their mendelian laws or mendelian principle of the inheritance is not actually follow there are some deviations so gene interactions are further of two types or we can classify them into the two categories one is the intergenic or sorry intergenic 
interaction or you can also call it as the interallelic interallelic interaction second is known as a intergenic or you can also call it as a non allelic interaction with help of the diagram i can easily explain it suppose on this locus there is a capital a and there is a small a if you remember i told you that in case of mendelian genetics character in this case of the pair of allele character is governed by only capital a presence of capital a means dominant phenotype absence of capital a means recessive phenotype that was the mendelian genetics but if character governed by the interaction of both capital a and small a then this is the intragenic interaction because a is a gene and capital a and small a are the two alleles of this gene it means you can say that it is the interaction within the allelic genes so this is called intragenic or interallelic gene interaction in contrast sometimes what happen that the character is controlled by suppose this is a and this is b if character is governed by the interaction of these two genes then a and b are the two different non allelic genes means we can say that interaction is going on in between the genes and a and b are not the alleles of each other so i am using the word non allelic gene interaction so if character governed by only capital a or only capital b then it is a mendelian genetics if character controlled by interaction of the both alleles of the gene means capital a and small a then it is a interagenic or interallelic gene interaction if character is governed by the interaction of the two non allelic gene then it is called intergenic gene interaction or non allelic gene interaction in this category intragenic gene interaction there are some examples like incomplete dominance like codominance like multiple allelism like pleiotropy and in this category also there are some cases like complementary gene epistasis supplementary gene duplicate gene collaborative gene inhibitory gene polymeric gene many more but some few examples i mentioned here out of these we have few interactions that i mentioned here so it is all about the intergenic or intragenic gene interactions in the coming section i will elaborate this incomplete dominance codominance complementary gene multiple allelism pleiotropy and supplementary gene and epistasis thank you very much